Hello, future husks. I am Jonathan Pruitt. And I, like you, are staring into the gaping mall of eternity, staving off the entropy that will devour our souls eventually, hungrily, happily. For this is nothing. We start as nothing, and we will end as nothing. But for what will some will call a brief shining moment, there is something which is that that points out the nothingness in us all. I, like you, have... Y you okay, Pruitt? Uh, we're, we're just talking about uh, Sorrow Sworn from Mordenkainen's, remember? Well, yeah, I mean, we're here at Outlaw Moon talking about Sorrow Sworn on WebDM. Let's, uh, let's inject some feels. Ooh. Feels? More feels. Deep feels? In our, Big in moods? Our, in, our, in our game. Big mm. moods. The Sorrow Sworn. Let's get into uh, where, where they come from. And Mordenkainen's, right? I'm not sure if they appeared in 4th edition before. There are some of the monsters that appear in uh, Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes that seem to have been drawn from or inspired by some 4th edition monsters. So I'm not sure if that's the case uh, with Sorrow Sworn. But I like them because they have a strong theme. They, they really fit their environment very well of the Shadowfell. And they're each one of them mechanically interesting and do something different and unique, I think they kind of, they, they sort of punch above their weight a little bit in terms of their CR. They're, they're beefy monsters yeah. uh, that have, each of them have like a gimmick or a trick as well. They have something that is about how they attack or, or the conditions under which they attack that if you change those conditions, something changes with the monster itself. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of them will have something that's like, okay, you know, the angry for instance, it's like if you don't attack it it's weaker, it, it thrives on violence. If you don't hit it or don't attempt to hit it, uh, then it will be weaker uh, mm -hmm. and, and therefore uh, less effective. So what really drew me to them in the first place was the fact that they are essentially the, the story of the Shadowfell embodied in a monster. Right, 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 and that's what I love about them so much. You can tell that an encounter with one of these monsters is an event and it's not necessarily something that you just like randomly encounter yeah. while you're in this place. It's an adventure. It's it's something that can can last a while. You know, you want to show the Shadowfell for what it is. It's this right. dark. It's very dreary. Yeah. It's gonna sap the the the, the morale right out of your party. So you start <laughs> doing that, and as soon as somebody starts to be like, oh no, I don't like this. Uh, you know, you, you spoil their rations. Yeah. Uh, because of time dilation or yeah. whatever. Whatever it is. They, right. Right. So right. they start to get a little hungry, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And then guess what happens? <laughs> the, the plane itself responds to that. Right. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, you try to try to invoke that in your players, and as soon as one of them latches onto it, it's like, oh, you're getting angry about this, are you? Yeah. Make a perception check. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of how that's how you sort of imagine it happening. I, I think there are some questions and and sort of mechanical considerations that we can get to later around like how the encounter comes about. Mm -hmm. But just the whole uh, the fiction of it is yeah. what I really like because each one of these creatures represents a, a stage of emotional condition that you might reach if you found yourself in the shadow fell, and mm -hmm. you can imagine sort of a group that gets there and like you're saying they're lost. First they get lost or just the isolation of the place. Maybe one of them uh, you know, is afflicted by some sort of short-term madness or flaw or something that kicks this whole thing off. And then uh, if you're paying attention to sort of your, your party and what they're saying, the things that they're you know, mentioning to each other, the table talk and sort of using that as a guide for how the players are going, you can see how this would turn into a very organic and emergent encounter where it's like, Oh no, we lost. We're, no, we're lost again. We we botched that forage roll mm -hmm. to try to to feed ourselves or something. Now we are in this position where our negative emotions are starting to manifest monsters that attack us. Yeah, and it's the fact that there's mortals in the Shadowfell experiencing these things. They're experiencing anger, frustration. They're lost and hungry. They're miserable, and all of these things start accumulating and piling up. And at every step of the way, this realm that they're in spawns another nightmare creature that that's mm -hmm. based off of this experience that they're having. If you think about it like that, you can easily see an encounter with the Sorrow Sworn leading to a TPK. None of these monsters attack the party when they're 
at their best. <laughs> so you're, they're already sort of weakened, they're already uh, at a disadvantage, and now one of these monsters that, mechanically speaking, are, are brutish and kind of nasty and hit hard is going to attack them. This could easily become like a centerpiece for an expedition into the Shadowfell or something like that. Um, and it's the promise of that and, mm -hmm. and realizing that promise that makes these such interesting monsters. Wow. Uh, yeah, most definitely. I think a, a good place to draw some inspiration, uh, I believe it's in Legend of Korra, mm. uh, one of the characters gets lost in the spirit realm. Right. And when you get lost in the spirit realm, you go to this place, and it's the fog of the lost, or whatever, the valley of the lost, or something. Mm -hmm. That's where all lost spirits go. And then if you go in there looking for someone, guess what? Yeah. You're going to get lost too. And you're just kind of attacked by all the things that haunted you in life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. When, when reading through this, like my mind goes right there. Yeah. yeah. You could almost see these creatures not as physical manifestations, but as purely like psychic manifestations. And you would use the monster as a way to simulate that encounter. But you could easily have it like, yeah, there's this big fight, but nothing's happening. It's just like your companion is just sitting there catatonic while in their mind they are battling with the lonely to try to keep, you know, to try to prevent this sort of uh, despair from sinking in. And you could almost see like losing a battle against one of these like makes the situation worse for that character, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, I'm, I'm uh, lost, right? Like I've, I've gotten us lost where, you know, there's no one here who can save us We're hopelessly uh, out of our depths. And now your leader is all of a sudden just finds themselves spacing and, and not, thinking about it and, and wandering in weird directions, it's because the lost has taken over their mind and is trying to attack them. All of that simulated by, say, a combat that takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different ways you can use these monsters um, in, in that respect to kind of get this feel for, this place sucks, like it's the shadow fell. It's the, it's the upside down, it's the realm of shadows. It's, the, it's terrible, right? Like you don't mm -hmm. want to have to spend any time here. Yeah, and if you do, you might find yourself a little angry. Oh so, yeah, uh, certainly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's let's kind of uh, run down these guys. <laughs> all right, bit. all right. Let's run them down. Yeah. Um, like I do love the, the the idea of like putting them kind of in a certain order. Yeah. You know, you start to feel a little lonely, then you realize you're lost. Yep. Then you might get a little angry. Mm -hmm. Or no, you would get hungry first. You get hungry you get first, and you get angry, and yeah. then you're just and like then you're truly wretched. And then you're just wretched. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, right? It's the story of the Shadowfell. It's yeah. that you go there to uh, find someone. Yeah. Right, you go there to rescue someone. You go there to retrieve something. Like there's all these different reasons why you would venture there. You can see how these creatures would form based on what you're describing. First, you get lost. Now you're hungry, and then you're eventually going to get lonely and angry and scared, and now you're just miserable and wretched. Walking through them, the angry comes about because you're in the Shadowfell and you experience anger, frustration. You know your avenues of of, <laughs> of effective action have been cut off, or you know you are just overcome with the negative emotion of the place and fed up with mm -hmm. you know the fact that all of your party members seem to be apathetic and unable to like just <laughs> push one more mile just get us to that you know we've got to get to where we're going we've got to retrieve that thing that's when angry <laughs> shows up and is is ready to just like charge into the middle of a biggest knot of, of, of big ass fighters it can find and thrive off of uh, off of the violence there yeah, because yeah. I mean they they're beefy. Yeah, they, they have they have a big ass AC. They right. got a lot of hit points. Right, and they hit pretty damn hard. They hit pretty hard, and if you're fighting back against them, they're going to hit harder, and yeah. it's going to be a lot worse as opposed to if you were using like spells to force them to be you know to restrain them or something like that, or taking the dodge action and and leaving. In my mind, if I were running the encounter against like a solo angry kind of, kind of character, you know, encounter, then it might be like. Yeah, if you guys spent three rounds not attacking it at all and, and dodging, disengaging, leaving, then it might it might leave you alone. It might stalk off to go find something else. Start singing songs and dancing. Right. <laughs> you know, calm emotions, a uh, spell that, that would probably be useful in that situation. But it's that sort of like the angry, the hungry is another. You know, your, your, your rations have spoiled. You've lost them or, you know... Uh, it turns out all along you forgot to bring them in the first place, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then the hungry is the 
the, that manifestation that comes out of the desperation of we don't have enough to eat. What are we going to do? It's already occurred after you've had a battle against, say, the lost or the lonely or something like that. The hungry hits when you're at your weakest. It, it's it's there when you you know you desperately need a long rest or you need something. And I think that's when hungry hits. And you can even look at it as not like physical hunger either. You could almost say it's like just, it devours. It's there to consume. Using that as sort of its basis, it's anytime you need something, mm -hmm. hungry shows up to take devour what little you have left to, yeah, know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that drive and ambition. That, I think for me, the lonely is, is, a, is a fun one. And it's actually the only one I've used in, in play before. I use the lonely as a template for a pain elemental, a psychic manifestation of, of pain and torture. It, was, it, it guarded a torture chamber, basically. So of course you would want a pain elemental yeah. in the middle of a torture chamber. But you know, it wants to be up close and personal with, with the enemy, right? Like get as many of the enemy around it as possible and focus in on those characters who feel socially isolated, Yeah. right? So if you have, say, a group of adventurers and there's like one human and everybody else is like all other sorts of like fantastical races or something like that, maybe it hones in on the human because they feel that sense of, of social isolation. Or you uh, roll on that table for the shadow fell that, that gives you like, a, say, a short-term madness or something like that, uh, despair might be mm -hmm. another one that, um, that does it. We'll touch on, I think, later about the fact that because these are all keyed off of emotions, a lot of this is like how your players role play their character, right? Like if you have players who are role playing the depth of, of their characters and all the different you know, emotional states that they might have, this is, they're gonna be easier monsters to work in as opposed to those players who just like don't really get into their character that much or those who sort of like never put themselves in a disadvantaged situation because they're just, that's just not the kind of player that they are. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, get some, we'll talk about some tips and, and tricks for that later, but it's worth mentioning here that so many of these monsters rely on your character having these negative emotions, which means you have to have a player who's willing to think about those things and consider them and work them into their portrayal. But coming back to the lonely, they, they are probably one of my favorites because they have that harpoon arm and they, you know, the, the psychic leech. Uh, they're just a, a nasty uh, monster yeah. to have to fight. The psychic leech and the, the, the whole thriving in company getting, what, advantage if they have mm -hmm. two other mm -hmm. creatures mm -hmm. around and they're also taking that auto, like, mini spiritual guardians oh, yeah. damage. All of the monsters uh, in the Sorrow Sworn are like this, but the Lonely especially, because they were the first one I used in, in combat, they were the first time that I really saw the potential for these monsters and the fact that they have so many unique mechanical abilities and they sort of like have some synergy with each other, but uh, they also seem like they present monsters that would be a unique experience in a unique fight. Once you figure out the trick to them, Probably not so much, mm -hmm. but how many times are you going to be running around the Shadowfell and fighting one of these in the first place? Like, you might only use these monsters once in an entire campaign, and so in that respect, they have a, a memorable, they have memorable sets of abilities that will make for a memorable encounter. The last two are Lost and Wretched. Lost is sort of that panic, that anxiety, that fear, oh my god, mm -hmm. I don't know where I am, what's going on, I can't find my way back. Uh, you know, now this, <laughs> you know, grotesque creature with these four extra limbs that you know will reflexively harm the creature that's grappling if someone tries to free it or attack it. You yeah. can see one of these like just running out and, and trying to grab a hold of a weaker party member and just like flee back into the, you know, to isolate, to separate them and make things worse for them. And then like in all of these encounters, you've got wretched who are just these swarms of latching lamprey-like yeah. <laughs> little beasts <laughs> that uh, accompany their larger brethren. Well, and also what I love about the wretched is that it specifically says that they just attach. It's not a grapple. Right. They're not grappling. No, they're not grappling. They're just yeah. hanging on to you and yeah. doing auto damage. Yeah. And the more of them, sp I mean, like, the, they are little kind of weaklings and one yeah. fireball could take oh, care sure. of Oh, sure. Right, right, right. But. They're going to swarm they're right on top of you. They're right on top of you. If they get a round or two with even a beefy party member. And, yeah, and you get a, a few hits in there because they do have their pack. They have pack tactics, uh -huh, uh -huh. Right? so they're getting advantage. So all they need to do is make 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 contact. You're looking at you know three or four of these things, and now you're taking forty ten plus four. Right uh, on top of probably having to deal with another yeah. one of the sorrow sworn and uh, mm -hmm. that that's in there, and particularly one of the ones that's like that benefits greatly from have from there being others around them or from being like up close and personal, like say mm -hmm. the hungry or the angry or the lonely. I think it could be a really nasty fight, and I think we're starting to see monsters now that 
the CR system might start to work with them because they hit harder, they, they, they have more things that they can do, they present a bigger tactical challenge mm -hmm. to the party. Um, that you might kind of see like, yeah, like these are not particularly high CR monsters, right? But by the time that the party's gonna be facing them regularly, that means they've got access to the Shadowfell, they can travel there, they're probably yeah. gonna be a bit higher level. So they're monsters that you can use that you wouldn't not, might think like, ah, oh, I don't know that I would use these. They seem weak for a party that can travel to the Shadowfell and do a lot of stuff. But no, I think they hit harder than, than their CR suggests. Mm -hmm. And there's synergy with their abilities that uh, would present a challenging fight. And I don't know, I, I hope we see more monsters like them uh, yeah. in the future. And the fact that most of them have like an auto grapple, basically. Sure, they've got something. Like if you know, they hit you, you are grappled now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah. There's the lost, the lonely, the, and the hungry each have that. The hungry, of course, has a restrain. Yeah, right? so you're grappled <laughs> and restrained. The things like the damage riders, uh, things that happen either automatically that, the, that then the player has to take an action to get out of or to do a save. Like All of those things make for a more dynamic fight, a more challenging fight. And then if you start thinking about how they might like fit together into combinations, not just the wretched and another one of the sorrow sworn, but say hangry. Fighting, fighting hungry and angry at the same time. Fighting lost and lonely. Yeah. Like th those, those would go well together. Uh, right. Well. Because especially because you've got one monster who wants to be up close and personal with the party and will, and, and has got like, say, one of them harpooned, they're dealing the leech damage, whereas the lost is over there trying to separate one of the other members out of the pack to take, say, someone with a low strength or a low uh, athletics and grappling them yeah. and walk, you know, uh, dragging them away, kicking and screaming. Oh, you tried to rescue them? I'm just going to do extra damage to, to the person now. Yeah, yeah. The lo the, yeah, that's where the, the lonely come up and engage the fight, the group of fighters. Sure. The wizard while, hanging back. While the lost comes in and tries to take away the, mm -hmm. the support casters and, and things like that. Yeah. All while packs of wretches just make life miserable for everyone else. <laughs> just hang around to everyone. Yeah, yeah. You could see it being a desperate fight, particularly if you allow these monsters to appear organically in your game. Now, I think you're going to have to do things to make that happen, make the conditions under which the Sorrow Sworn would appear, you're gonna have to massage that. Because when was the last time your party was lost? When was the last time they were lonely? When was the last time they were hungry or angry without either you needing to do something to provoke those conditions, mm -hmm. or you've just got like awesome role players who are willing to go like, yeah, my character is just fed up and mad and you know, just angry with you or storms off by themselves or does something that you would yell at a person in a horror movie for doing. Yeah. Right, like, because yeah. <laughs> if right you're in the Shadowfell, you're in a horror movie. Yeah, if you're in the Shadowfell, you're in a horror movie, right? Like, that's yeah. just sort of how it is. Yeah, don't break up the party. Right, so maybe you take the, that DMG section on the Shadowfell and you rework that table, the table that, that only has, like, three result, <laughs> results you add extra. Maybe it's, it is rations spoiling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is, uh, uh, you know, intense feelings of isolation or loneliness. Goes without saying, or maybe it doesn't go without saying, and we should explicitly say it, that if you're going to play with these kinds of things to know your party, know the people you're playing with, and if you do and you think like, hey, everybody's going to be fine with this, it'll be good, but you're dealing with creatures that are like manifestations in the game world of real life things people struggle with and deal with and, and that wear them down and grind them down and make life just difficult for them. So it's worth talking about that if yeah. you're not well connected enough with your party already to kind of be able to anticipate what might just be like, yeah, they're not going to have a good time dealing with a monster that's basically like depression. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or was, maybe they would, and, yeah. and that's a, uh, a, you know, like a, would be an interesting or, or uh, enlightening thing for them. You know, well, yeah, knows? I mean, I, I can totally see like the depression overlord sending his minions angry, hungry, lost, lonely, wretched yeah. after the party. Yeah, definitely. And he hasn't even brought in his his, his big key, which is anxiety. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a anxiety This seems a, like an incomplete list. Yeah, and it, anxiety <laughs> needs to be a monster that never attacks it never, directly, yeah. Yeah. but it always, it just offers debuffs. Yeah. Like, it gives you disadvantage on things. Mm -hmm. it, like, that's it what... Never it never does it. It's that monster that the damage. DM always forgets to, to uh -huh. do it. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> it just has, like, a bunch of, like, aura effects. Um, 
And so it's just something you kind of throw in there, almost like a like a like a like a shaman totem or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, it's just the battlefield. Oh, uh, it's like an invisible presence. Yeah. Uh, for it. So, first off, really understanding how the rules for getting lost work, how the rules for foraging work, both mm -hmm. both in the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook, making sure that you understand how those uh, work and how you're going to use them in this journey through the Shadowfell if you want these creatures to emerge organically through play. And you're not just gonna say like, hey, you guys find yourselves in a situation in which you experience these things, here's the monster, we're gonna have mm -hmm. a fight. You know, it's DC 20 survival check to find food in an, in an environment in which you wouldn't otherwise normally be able to find food. The Shadowfell certainly, to me, qualifies as a place where there's not a lot of abundant options to eat. No. Uh, yeah. You know, this is one of those things where if you have a ranger in the party or someone else who like literally can't get lost or has uh, or it was meant for this kind of exploration, then Stay you, outlanders. <laughs> right. <laughs> then you need to do something. You need to stack the deck against the players uh, or find a way to undermine their abilities this one time. And the fact that they're on a different plane, the fact that they're somewhere else, it's yeah. different. This is the underworld, the realm of shadow, the in between. You know, you can right. say, yeah, this doesn't work like other places. Yeah, it doesn't Sorry. follow normal, like, rational geography. Right. You're going you're gonna to turn a corner, and a mat it's a matter of perspective. Oh, that looks like a valley. No, 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 it's not a valley. It's just a ditch, and right. it just looked that way. Right. Uh, right because right. the Shadowfell just messes with you in mm -hmm. that regard. Mm -hmm. like, but and the Shadowfell is also where yeah. the Domains of Dread are located, places like Barovia and, yeah. and other uh, things that you would find in Ravenloft. And so we've already got the established sort of like the mists of Barovia that confuse and entrap people. Like, why isn't this entire place like that? This entire... Mm -hmm realm is designed to keep you here, to trap you here. So why wouldn't it? Because the spirits of the dead don't provoke these kind of monsters that come about, you know? Yeah. Maybe the, the you know, the, the creatures and, and beings that live in the Shadowfell can control the Sorrow Sworn in some way. They're able to, like, mess with them or, or mm -hmm. manipulate them, but they still need mortals coming there to generate these monsters. That to they, invoke them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then once invoked, they can be sent into the material plane to, you know, re further havoc or yeah. whatever you know the hungry is a spirit of famine that sweeps through a region and yeah. now of course you might want to change the monsters up a bit make them legendary give them lair actions that kind of thing yeah just make them make them harder <laughs> i just thought of another amazing yeah. uh reference yeah star trek next generation skin of evil the episode, spoiler alert, but everybody should know this, but where Yar dies one of the times that she oh, dies. Oh, yeah, 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 right. She yeah. dies twice. That's true, yes. Um, but the episode where she dies, where it's that, the, the, this race of people shed their negative emotions yeah. and it distilled itself into a liquefied, oily form. That's and right. And it's yeah. all of the anger and rage yes. of a society left over and like, what if that's all the shadow for is? Well, that's right, right? As yeah. people die and pass on to the lands of the dead, those last impressions, the last thoughts they have get shed and left in this area. Yeah. And yeah. eventually, anger, angry well, shows that's, up. That's a really good point because like the outer realm, the realms outside of of uh, the prime material in a, in a sort of baseline D&D world, the things that you believe, the things that you, the, the ideologies that you hold, the, the, the sincerely held beliefs that you have are manifest themselves in the outer planes, right? So how is the Shadowfell not any different, right? Like, think of all the kinds of messed up things your brain will make you believe if you're in the depths of one of these kind of negative emotions. All the weird iron logic that, that makes people despair and feel like there's no way out of these situations they find themselves in like that's what this monster represents so how is that not also the shadow fell where these beliefs they're toxic and poisonous and not true but they're still powerful yeah. then manifest here then you know there's all kinds of things you can you can do with that uh, kind of lore if you if you want to move away from the baseline you yeah. know sorrow sworn or perhaps the offspring of some civilization that found a way to remove these things from themselves like you were saying yeah. right like shed them well now there's monsters in the world like how is that any better like because you couldn't deal with your anger like yeah. you know because you were tired of feeling lonely you know yeah. like you can do so much more with a monster when you think about it in those terms it's, it's more than just an encounter it's more than you know a tough fight now it's a being in the world that has an impact on the world it, there's consequences for doing Doing something uh, for interacting with it or, mm -hmm. or something, and it's it's the reason why monsters like the Sorrow Sworn just I can sit there and just think about them for hours and be like, God, I just 
there's so much you can do, with yeah. just, even just this little bit that's in the Tome of Foes. Yeah, and, and a DM can even, uh, you know, if your players, maybe your players aren't the kind that want to get their feels on like that. Sure. I mean, this is why you have NPCs, right? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, the NPC You're that they find out. or that they're <laughs> escorting through the Shadowfell. Yeah. Oh, your mission, you got in there. You yeah. broke into the Shadow King's dungeons. You yeah. broke this person out. Now you gotta. Now you gotta extract them. Right. Well, yeah. Guess what? They've Down been there, trapped there for so. They've long. been lonely for a while. They're kind of hungry. That's why nobody escapes because the guards of his palace. They're not actual guards. Right. They're the Sorrow Sworn. They're the Sorrow Sworn. Yeah. Um, like just thinking about that, I'm just like. Uh. Yeah, yeah. These are really creepy monsters. They're very surrealistic. Also, like uh, that's what I like about them. Is mm-hmm. It's 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 an element of just like. Um, like they don't all have to look the same. Most things just, you know, oh, they're oh, that's what goblins look like. Sure, oh, sure, what, sure. You know, right, right, right. And there might be some slight changes, but yeah. for me, like I can see like the Sorrow Swan. It's like, yes, this is a kind of a general template, but anything like this. Oh yeah. Uh, right. Like the wretched. Like I see, you know, they they run around or whatever, but they could just as easily be like little tremor monsters. That they could can easily also be like, grow uh, underground and come up and uh, just latch onto you like these giant little worms. Yeah, exactly. They could easily like I, I can see them being a lot of little things. To me, the the defining feature is like the there's like they're like a lamprey mouth, right? It's yeah. the it's the lamprey mouth, or like the hungry. It's their giant maw. Like yeah. Everything else is they're, they're going to be different every time except the giant maw. You could also go like the opposite route and go like they call them the angry. Yeah. Be lost. Like, there's only the one of them. The only the one of them. There's only the one of them, and that this is the one, and it it manifests. It will find you. You, you will rather more likely you bring it into existence mm-hmm. through being here. Like, why are why you are brought, you here? You brought your anger in here. Yeah, you brought your anger in here. Why would you do that? So maybe like if you if you are using like the Shadowfell sort of lore, then maybe there are beings in the Shadowfell that are just like, listen, you're immortal. You got to get out. Mm-hmm. Like, you are a ticking time bomb. You will spawn monsters through the bad experiences that you're going to have have here. It's going to make life miserable for the rest of us. We're just the dead, right? Like, we're just, like, here in the spirit, in the underworld, just trying to have our afterlife and shit. You're over here, mortal, like, coming up in here and spawning all these monstrosities. Like, get out of here with your emotions. Get out of yeah. here with your intense feel, feels. Your feels you and know? your emoticons. Like, come on. <laughs> Uh, you're uh, you're getting your you're you're getting your emotions everywhere. Please yeah. uh, contain yourself. You spilled some emotion on my foot, <laughs> right. um, and now I'm angry. And oh now God. I'm angry. Now right. it's spreading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now and now it spreads, and that's kind of how it, uh, it looks. And, and thinking about them as campaign monsters, you can do the same thing. What happens when the hungry is manifested? Is it is just the spirit of it around here just causes food to rot and be destroyed, and everybody's in the, you know hungry and desperate and that kind of thing. So, a lot of possibility with the Sorrow Sworn. They are, I, I hope to continue to use them, but I just love them. I, and I, I can't, every time I think about them, there's new stuff. Yeah. There's just a monster that keeps on giving. I love it. Head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. Want to see us play? We've got games every week on Twitch, which we upload to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, give us a thumbs up, and tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. <laughs> need to come up with a, the, the counterbalance to the Sorrow Sword. Oh, yes, the joy, <laughs> the joy <Yeah. laughs> The joy boys. Uh, right, yeah. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. <laughs> Happiness. Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Purpose. <laughs> Ambition. Ambition. <laughs>